Hello and welcome back. This is lesson number five. In lesson number five we're going to talk about making smooth motion of your sprites in the scratch editor and also about uh, something called functions and how to uh, compartmentalize your code. So to begin with we're going to start with a clean scratch uh, screen with the cat in the middle as we usually do and we're going to start by making it move but we're going to make it a little bit more interactive. To do that we're going to be able to use the up, down, left, right arrow keys that exist on your keyboard to make the cat move in those directions. So like we've done many times before we're going to make that move uh, control system and we're going to hit click the forever and in that we're going to create the motion that we've done many times before so I'm going to go ahead and just do this at this as I talk and hopefully not screw up too badly and I'm going to get you to do exactly the same thing I'm doing as you watch me on the screen so again we're going to make it switch to costume we'll start with costume one it moves 10 steps we wait for we're not going to wait for one second or we'll wait for less than that I'm going to duplicate this duplicate this block of code and put it down below here except this time I'm choosing costume 2 and this looks very similar to what we had before let's make the event when we press the space key so if I were to press the space key and run this program it should move across the screen like it's doing in fact it's doing this forever because that's the type of code that we have in here right now so instead of using the space key let's use a arrow key for this if I can find it in here somewhere the let's make it move to the right so when the right arrow key is pressed we're going to move in this direction let me stop this because the forever loop is doing exactly what it's told as soon as I press the right arrow key it goes into this loop forever and it never breaks out of here which is certainly not what I want it to do because I may not want it to move to the right of the screen forever so I'm going to take this code out keep it put it to the side throw away this forever loop come back in here and do repeat until this is a type of uh, loop that will continue to do something until a condition that's inside here becomes true what kind of condition will I use well in this case I'm going to use the not condition and I'm going to pre I'm going to have it sense for when the key is not pressed. Okay, so this is kind of strange. It says repeat the following. So it's going to repeat whatever's in the loop, which is these statements I just put in here right now, until this condition becomes true. So if the space key is not pressed, it's true. And if that's true, it's going to stop doing this. Now, I don't yeah, I'm going to have the right arrow key because I, after all, had the right arrow key start this off. So it's going to be the right arrow key that I'm checking for. And I'm going to choose to do this. So now when I run this, you'll see I get fairly smooth motion out of this, except that, of course, waiting for one second is not enough, or actually is way too much. I'm going to wait for 0.1 seconds. So we see the motion will become a little more fluid. Okay? And let's try it. So I start it. And as soon as I press the right key, he moves across the screen, but as soon as I let go of the right key, the cat immediately stops. It's, it reacts very quickly to my keyboard uh, keys pressed. And that's probably the best way to create motion in a cat is to use this kind of structure. Okay. Now, uh, let's make some variables so that we can choose the size of the step that the cat moves and how long the wait is. So we're going to create a variable called delay, which I'm going to put in place of this number, so that whenever I choose the delay value, it immediately updates this. And I'm going to make another variable that has the length of the step. I'll call it step length, so that I can change it from 10 steps to anything else I want quite easily. So go to data, make a variable. It's going to be just for this sprite. It's a local variable for this sprite. And I'm going to call it um, step length using the convention I mentioned earlier. Click OK. And I'm going to make a new variable, another one, called delay. Now that's kind of a, a very vague type of name for a variable, and we want variables to have names that describe their uh, actual purpose. So maybe I'll put step delay here. Whoop, use this lowercase to start a variable, and each subsequent word should have capitalized first letter so step delay is like this and remember to choose for this sprite only and go OK. 
So now what I'll do is I'll make, instead of typing numbers directly into this block of code, I'm going to have it say move or wait the delay, the step delay time. Move it into both of my wait statements. And instead of move 10 steps, I'm going to go step length. Now right now, that's not going to do anything for me because I haven't defined what those actual values are. So I'm going to do that as soon as I start my program. I come up to events, choose flag, or when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to immediately set my delay and my step length to values that will be defined here. So I'm going to set my step delay to 0 0.1, which is what we had before, but now changing it in one place changes it everywhere in my code. And step length let's make it five steps. So what I should see now when I press the right arrow key is the cat will move again, but it won't move quite as fast because I've changed the steps to be about half as long as they were before. So trying this out, I press my right arrow key, he moves across the screen kind of slowly, but doing exactly what I expected. As soon as I let go of the right arrow key, the cat immediately stops, which is great. Let's change that to 20 move my cat back to here and you can see the difference now this will make so click the uh, start button and see how my cat kind of runs across the screen okay so that's working just as I expected if I use my step delay and call that 0 0.4 it's going to be a much slower motion for this cat when it moves across the screen but it's going to make big steps when it does so there it goes almost like it's kind of hopping from one place to another across the screen. So that's how that's why we change a variable in one location and we use variables to update it everywhere else in the code where I have these uh, variables located. But that's only part of what we're going to do today. We're also going to make the cat move up, down, right, and left. So let's make another statement like this that makes the cat move to the left. Well, most of the code is going to be exactly the same as it was before. So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to right click where I have my event and I'm going to go duplicate and put it right beside it here. Instead of using the right arrow, let's use the left arrow. And be sure to update it in this this condition statement here. So instead of the right arrow, you use left arrow. A lot of code errors or bugs start when people forget to update little things like this. And of course, it's still not going to work the way we want to because if I were to just leave it the way it is and press the left arrow, it's still going to move a positive step length number of steps. Positive, remember, is to the right in our stage. So even when I press the left arrow key, which I'm going to do, my cat's going to move to the right, not what I want. So I'm pressing the left arrow right now. And sure enough, it's moving to the right. It's not doing what, it's, what I want it to do. It's doing exactly what I'm telling it to do. So how do I get this to become negative? Well, it's not that hard to do. I'm going to use this operator. I'm going to use a multiplication. And I'm going to multiply my step length. Actually, I'm not even going to do that. That could work, but I've actually thought of a better solution. If I want it to move to the left, why don't I have the direction point directly to the left? So right here, make this direction left, negative 90 which is a, probably the best way to do it. And so let's give that a shot. Just make sure that this does what I want it to do. Oh, clearly didn't do what I wanted it to do. But um, yeah, it's definitely not doing what I want it to do. It's bounced up and down. And when I press the right arrow key, it still moves in the wrong direction. So first off, let's make sure our cat, when he changes direction, does not rotate, but goes left or right. Okay, and notice how I didn't put the direction in here because initially the cat started off facing to the right so this worked just fine. And this again is where coding or debugging can be difficult. Now when I run it, and by the way I don't like my delay so long, I'm going to check that, I'm going to make that point one again and I'm going to make them step five steps. Now doing that here cha updated everything, that's why we do this, and I run it I'm going to have my cat move beautifully to the left when I press the left arrow key. He stops when I let go. Now when I press the right arrow key, guess what's going to happen? 
yeah, it's moving in the same direction, which is probably not what you expected, but it's doing exactly what you told it. It's moving 10 steps or whatever number you decided, 5 steps, as we told it, but it's actually facing to the left, so it's going to keep moving to the left. If I want it to move right, I need to go back to my direction and make sure it's pointing to the right. Now it, where it runs, I should have my cat move to the right when I press the right arrow key and to the left when I press the left arrow. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, the cat's just strolling along, minding his own business. Okay, so I'll put him right back in the middle of my screen. How about up and down? Well, at this point I'm actually going to change one more thing. Notice how I'm constantly duplicating the code and much of the code is exactly the same in the, as the other block. This can make your code unwieldy and large and there's a way to get around this called uh, functions or using things called functions also known as methods in object-oriented programming. Methods are a specific block of code that does a specific task. Methods or functions should not take up a lot of code. They should be fairly concise and compact. Pretty much perform one or two defined functions or defined uh, objectives and not many but do them very well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a function for this movement that we have here. And I'm going to do that by going up to more blocks and this is where you have a user defined block where you make a block just like there's all these blocks here uh, that are already existing for you we can make one of our own. Okay, So I'm going to go make a block I'm going to call it um, walk simply because that makes the most sense. Notice under options I can add a bunch of inputs here. We're going to get to that in a second, but I'm just going to click OK. And here it is ready to go. Now defining it, what does it actually do for me? Well, frankly, it does all this. Okay. It will actually walk, switch a costume, move it across the screen and whatever every time I call this function. Okay. So instead of having it all in here, I can throw this out put the walk feature in here and anytime I plug this walk block in it will actually execute the code that I've defined down here. This makes your code much more compact and much easier to read and also much easier to debug when the time comes. So just organizing things I'll have these two underneath each other. Move this up. Let's see if uh, this actually works the way I intended. So running this thing I'm going to press the right arrow key. There it goes. I let go, it stops, I press the left arrow key, left arrow key, and it goes to the left. And it's moving the cat just as it did before. But reading this block of code is actually very easy now and easy to follow and easy to understand. Let's duplicate it and put it here, except this time I want my uh, cat to move up. So I also make sure I move this to up arrow here. And the direction I'm going to point it in is going to be up. So this block of code works. I'll do it one more time. I'll duplicate it, put it right down here, and this one's going to be the down arrow key. And I'm going to make it move a point down and change this to down. And get it to actually, we'll, we'll try it one more time here. So this should work up, down, left, and right. There it goes up. Cat's going down, left, and right. And as you can see right here, it's performing those functions exactly as I want it to. Okay, now to give it a little bit more control, let's actually add some inputs that we can put into this walk block. So let's edit it. Right clicking on the header for this definition means I can edit it. I'm going to make two inputs. So I'm going to click a number input and another number input that can actually work when I call this function. Number one will actually be the stop, the step delay. And number two length number two will be the step length. Okay. And of course I'm going to do that for everyone here. Step delay, step length, step delay, step length all the way through here. So it actually takes these variables, passes them to my function the function takes them, so step delay comes in as number one, and I don't put step length and step delay in here. 
I can actually, I just put number one and number two. Let's see if I can copy those or maybe just do this. Num1, now that was step delay, so that goes into here. And num2 goes here. I have to be careful that I'm matching the proper number with the proper variable. And it will work properly because the first number that come in is the delay var value. So number one better come in and go to the weight blocks. Num2 is the step length, and that's where we move in certain step length. These guys I can throw out. and then I'll run it again and everything should work this is what it did before moving it to the right moving to the left up and down now why would I want to do it so I pass these parameters or these variables from my walk the call this is the call to the function here passing along these two variables which come into my function here and are actually executed inside here why would I want to have these well that's because I could update these step delay and step lengths individually in each of these particular spots to have different values and they work uniquely based on the numbers I pick. For example, let's take this chunk of code here and let's duplicate it. I'll stick it into right here where, actually I'll put it right here, clean up my code so I can see everything. Where it go? So I had, I'm going to set the step delay to be 0 0.01 and the step length here to be, uh, let's make it, let's make it uh, 10. So that when I run the, well when I press the right arrow, it has a unique set of values it's going to pass to my walk function. The other functions, I will just set them to be the same. Uh, step and deli time delays as they were before. So I'm not going to make any changes to those. Oops, I should have duplicated them. And I'm going to duplicate that, stick it in here, and take this guy and move it up here. So every block here will have exactly the same step delay and lengths as each other except for when I move to the right. When I move to the right, it's going to pass different values to this function so that when I'm moving to the right it will seem to move faster than it did before but every other direction will move the same way. So we'll start it off moving left he moves at a fairly decent pace. Up moves just as fast, down just as fast but watch what happens when I move to the right. He moves much faster. So I can customize my code much much better by using these parameters or these variables that I pass as parameters to my function. So that concludes lesson number five, uh, using motion and looping in Scratch. And come back for lesson number six, where we'll go into some more Scratch concepts.